something of a watershed appears to have been reached in the year 2003. In that year, three scientists, Arvind Bord, Alexander Vilenkin, and Alan Guth, were able to prove that any universe, which is on average expanding throughout its history, cannot be infinite in the past, but must have a past space-time boundary. And what makes their proof so powerful is that it holds independently of any physical description of the early universe. Because we can't yet provide a physical description of the very early universe, this has been fertile ground for speculations. This early region has been compared by some scientists to the regions on ancient maps labeled here there be dragons. Uh, it can be just filled with all sorts of fantasies. But the bord guth vilenkin theorem is independent of any physical description of that early beginning of the universe. Their theorem implies that even if the universe is just part of a wider multiverse of many universes, even then the multiverse itself must have an absolute beginning. Vilenkin is blunt about the implications. I quote, it is said that an argument is what convinces reasonable men and a proof is what it takes to convince even an unreasonable man. With the proof now in place, cosmologists can no longer hide behind the possibility of a past eternal universe. There is no escape. They have to face the problem of a cosmic beginning. One can detect a boundary to space-time by either showing the re requirement for singularity, that is to say a requirement for everything in the past to converge at a single point prior to which there couldn't have been a physical event, or you can prove it by what we're going to call the BVG theorem, which is a slightly different approach, but comes up with the same boundary to past time. I just want you to recognize three big space-time geometry arguments. The first one was put together by uh, Borda and Villenkin, Arvind Borda and Alexander Villenkin in 1993. In that particular argument, which, by the way, is still valid today, there is an exception for weak energy conditions, but even Alan Guth said, you know, he's, Alan Guth said, look, the weak energy condition problem is so minimally, minimally probable that I do not consider it a problem. They basically elucidated five conditions in an inflationary model universe, which our universe is, and showed that that inflationary model universe would have to have a singularity. In 1997, they discovered a minimally, 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 minimally probable possibility of weak energy conditions being violated, but it didn't seem like it could apply to any universe even remotely resembling our own. That's still very valid today. I mean, you know, even with the, the possible exception of the weak energy condition. The second came in 1999. Alan Guth, who is the father of inflationary theory, big MIT professor, uh, he actually uh, showed, after a comprehensive study, goes through, right, assesses every single model. He comes out with this quote at the end. Hard as physicists have tried, to find some kind of an inflationary model universe that does not have a beginning. Still, he says, the universe uh, right now, every single cosmological model we have built based on an inflationary hypothesis has to have a beginning. He says it's so omnipresent that he considers it a virtual requirement of the inflationary model. But then the cap comes in 2003, when Borda, Villenkin, and Guth come up with what's called the BVG theorem, right? Borda, Villenkin, and Guth theorem. And that uh, theorem in uh, 2003 basically states that every inflationary model universe, all you have to have, it doesn't matter what kind of universe it is, absolutely independent of the physics of the universe, right? Independent of the physics of the universe. Any inflationary model universe, so that's, or any expanding universe. In fact, it could be expanding at just a very minimal rate. doesn't really matter. You just have to have an average Hubble expansion greater than zero. And what they predict is that's going to have to have a beginning, too. 
And they did it in a very simple and elegant way. Uh, essentially, you know, if you just analogize it, as Villenkin does, to, you know, a, a spaceship passing by Earth at 100,000 miles per hour. And, of course, the, 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 the galaxies are expanding away from us at 20,000 miles per hour because of the expansion of space, let's say, okay? So, remember, space is expanding between the galaxies. So, of course, this, uh, this uh, space ship, by the time it, it gets to, uh, let's say, another galaxy out there, what the observers see is that the universe is, uh, uh, that the spaceship is coming at them at 80,000 miles per hour, 100,000 minus 20,000. Well, if you keep that analogy, right, uh, of the expanding universe and the slowing down, right, of, of uh, relative velocities within the universe itself, as you keep going backwards, if you see what I'm saying, through time, you're going to get then relative velocities which are increasing, right? You go to the future, decreases, you go back in time, it increases until you finally come to the speed of light in a finite proper time. And you're not going to exceed that with a relative velocity in any universe remotely resembling our own. Now, what he says is that's a boundary to space-time. And that boundary to space-time, it could be a mark, on a pathway to another uh, kind of physics, or it could be an absolute beginning of the universe itself. But, and here's the curious thing, let's suppose it's a pathway to another kind of physics. Then, of course, he says, but if that universe, with its different physics, all it has to meet is one condition, and its average Hubble expansion is greater than zero, then, of course, it, too, must have a boundary to space-time. And if that demarcated another one to another uh, uh, physics, and that physics had an average Hubble expansion greater than zero, that would have to have a beginning. And eventually, you get to the point where you're actually going to have to have a beginning of all the beginnings of all the speculated and hypothesized pre-universes, you're going to have to have one where finally uh, there is no mark of a physics, but it's just simply the beginning of the universe itself. Because the only condition that needs to be met is an average Hubble expansion greater than zero. People said, well, wait a minute, what about an oscillating universe or something of that nature? Even still, the BVG theorem applies because all you need is an average Hubble expansion. So just as long as the expansions and contractions average out to minimally greater than one, which they would have to if you started with an expansion, then, of course, you got a problem. Every known conceivable model of the universe has to have a beginning. 